Oh, so we stream on Noodle or where? Let me pause in here. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me a second here. For D, this is streamer, like Reno. So, can it get bad? Yeah, it's Oh, the Vega facts. Cool. So, I have some time here all day, so let's get a good game. Middle. Oh, I love the layer. WordPress. Um, I love the there. The come to be in forebears until my practice. Der kommer til at være her til august, så derfor så går jeg igennem de her tutorials, der det kommer til at tage 100 år, som I kan se her. Øhm, så forhåbentlig kan jeg nå det hele igennem. Øhm, jeg tror det tog om at trænde to dage uden afbrydelser, hvis jeg skulle gå igennem det hele. Så det er sådan lidt nøjagtigt. Øhm, og mange af de her ting her, det er jo sådan noget med øh, mailserver og alt sådan der. Så det kan godt være, at jeg ikke ved helt om, jeg kommer til at gå igennem det hele, men nu ser vi. Så, undskyld. Så jeg tror vi bare går i gang. Welcome again. In the previous two lessons, we created a custom section in the administration panel to activate a built-in contact form. And with this activation, we hooked an action for WordPress to create a custom post type for us to collect all the messages that a user will send by using the contact form that in the future we're going to create when we're going to build our front end. What we have to do now, we have to create a custom meta box to accept an input that usually is not a default input of WordPress. If we uh, go inside uh, this post that I created as a test, we can use the title of the post to collect the name of the user that is sending the email. Uh, we can use the body, the message, the standard the visual editor of WordPress to collect the actual message that it's going to send. And now we need a custom element. We need another field to collect the email. We want to save also that data. Uh, WordPress gives us the ability to create a custom meta box to create whatever uh, data and save whatever data to all the posts or pages or custom post types that, that we want. So let's take a look on how to do it. Let's access our text editor and let's stay for now in the file custom post type.php because uh, also the uh, by the way, you can follow what I do here on the meta box even if it's not strictly related to the custom post type this meta box is strictly related to the contact custom post type that i created mm -hmm. and also in this case i don't want to create the action here i don't want to add the action if the contact form is not active so also in this case i have to put the hook of the action inside the if statement to check if the user wants actually the contact form so let's scroll down until the end of our code let's create a comment here and let's write contact meta boxes because maybe in the future we could extend, if you want, you could extend this functionality. You could extend form by collecting the phone number or the business name or whatever other field you want to collect in your backend. You can totally do it with the same functionalities that we're going to take a look now, that we're going to use right now. So let's start by creating a custom function. Call, as usual, a unique name, so sunset, underscore, add, underscore, meta, underscore, box. This is pretty generic, so let's use sunset, underscore, contact, underscore, add, meta, box. Brackets, no parameter needs to be passed. Curly brackets, let's open the curly brackets. And inside here, we can uh, write the code to activate a custom meta box. To activate the custom meta box, we have to use a pre-built functionality of WordPress that, as usual, if you already notice uh, right now, WordPress uses uh, the function's name uh, basically identical to the action that you want to achieve. So also in this case, it's going to be add meta box because of course we want to create a meta box so the function is called add meta box pretty straightforward the first parameter is the string id is really important because it's as usual the unique id that we're going to use to update our meta box to retrieve whatever information is inside this meta box so let's use this id uh, in this case it's going to be add meta to activate a custom meta box to activate the custom meta box set underscore contact underscore add meta box Brackets, no parameter needs to be passed. Curly brackets, let's open the curly brackets. And inside here, we can uh, write the code to activate a custom meta box. To activate the custom meta box, we have to use a pre built functionality of WordPress that, as usual, if you already notice uh, right now, WordPress uses uh, the function's name uh, basically identical to the action that you want to achieve. So, also in this case, it's going to be add meta box because of course we want to create a meta box so the function is called add meta box pretty straightforward the first parameter is the string id is really important because it's as usual the unique id that we're going to use to update our meta box to retrieve whatever information is inside this meta box so let's use this id as contact underscore email 
The title is the title that is going to appear in the actual box that is going to be generated inside our backend. So inside here, user email, Oops, uploader. The callback function, also this one, really, really important because without the callback function, we cannot generate any code. We cannot put any HTML. So the callback function has to be a unique callback function. And in this case, it's sunset underscore contact underscore email. The screen option gives us the ability to print a meta box inside whatever post page or custom post type we want to put our meta box. So in my case, I want this meta box inside the contact sunset custom post type. And I know that the actual ID of my custom post type is sunset contact. So I have to just print this one in the screen sunset contact. We don't need any context, any priority or any callback arguments for these meta box. In the future, we're going to take a look at what those options are need for. But for now, these standard for attributes are more than enough to create a custom meta box. Let's save it. Let's put a semicolon at the end, of course, as usual. Let's not forget it. And this function is pretty much it. So now with this function, we created, we activated the code of the meta box. Now we have to call the, we have to create the callback function to actually generate as usual, the HTML that is going to be inside our administration panel. And as a generic rule, when we use a callback, especially when we start adding a lot of functions that they have the same name, this one is called contact, this one is sunset contact. So they're pretty similar. If it's a callback, you can put callback at the end of the name of the function. So mm, you will know that all the callbacks function that you finish with callback are related to an actual action or an actual hook of WordPress and are all callbacks function. So just to maintain a little bit of clarity while you read your own code or see if someone else is reading your code. So let's create this callback function by writing function and let's copy paste the exact same name brackets. And inside the brackets, I want to pass the post variable that it's going to be automatically passed by the add meta box. And it's going to carry all the information related to which post is this meta box used for. So in my case, is the custom post type sunset contact. So this post variable is going to have inside all the information, the ID, uh, title, uh, slug, whatever. We pretty much will use only the ID of the post, but we have to pass this variable inside the brackets in order to use it curly brackets to open the function and inside here we can start writing a lot of code and you will notice that to um, manage update save and properly code a meta box it requires a lot of code but the good thing is that the code is always the same so after you do the first meta box you can reuse the code with a for each function to generate all sorts of type of meta boxes so you don't have to rewrite the code multiple times, but bear with me. Let's take a look on how to do it and let's learn how to use this amazing function of WordPress. So, so I didn't really understand it correctly, namely, um, uh, and what I'm say. I get to open the function and inside here we can start writing a lot of code and you will notice that you um, manage, update, save and properly code a meta box, it requires a lot of code. But the mm -hmm. good thing is that the code is always the same. So after you do the first meta box, you can reuse the code with a for each function to generate all sorts of type of meta boxes. So you don't have to rewrite the code multiple times. But bear with me, let's take a look on how to do it and let's learn how to use this amazing function of WordPress. No, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. So first of all, we have to use the WP underscore nonce underscore field. Okay. If you follow this uh, series of tutorials since the beginning, you know that a nonce is a pre-built uh, functionality of WordPress that generates a unique, um, a unique ID, a unique value, a unique string, like encoded string to check if it's uh, the action, whatever action of saving or deleting or updating your information is legit from a legit user inside your administration mm -hmm. panel. These nonce, it's really important to avoid that someone else outside, maybe a hacker, someone is trying to hack your system and is trying to send information to update or to access your database. So these nonce is really important. So let's specify a bunch of option here. And the action is of course a unique action that we will use in the future to refer to our nonce. So in my case, is going to be sunset underscore save underscore email underscore data. And here the string name, I can use usual sunset underscore meta underscore box underscore. Uh, let's use sunset contact. underscore contact underscore yeah, email contact. meta box oh, nonce. Me. And the last two parameters, we can leave it empty because we don't need to use it right now. We're going to take a look in the future how to use also the last two parameters. Let's keep going and let's collect 
uh, the value, whatever value this meta box is gonna have with a unique variable. So let's create a variable called value. And inside here, we can use a function of WordPress to retrieve the value of a custom meta box. And the function is get underscore post underscore meta. And inside here, we have a bunch of options. Let's put a semicolon at the end. First, we have to specify which post ID we wanna use to check our post meta. And of course, as I said before, we already have the post variable and inside the post variable is stored the ID that we can access inside the object. So let's use post meta dash bigger than. So we have to use this little arrow that is standard of PHP to access an attribute inside an object array. So let's put ID, that is the unique attribute of the post. And inside here, we have to use a unique string k that we never used. So we have to specify a unique k that in the future we're going to use to also update this uh, meta box information. So in my case, um, I want to use, oh, um, and as a strict rule for all the uh, string value for our meta box, they have to start with an underscore before the actual name. So let's use the contact email underscore value underscore k. And the boolean, we have to specify if this value is a single value or multiple value, maybe it's an array or maybe it's a checkbox with multiple checks. For now, for us, it's just a single value. So we have to specify through because it's a boolean. So through, we are going to say to WordPress, this is just a single value. It's not an array of values or whatever. So value is a single string that we need to use. And now with a simple echo function, we can print whatever information we want inside our meta box. Let's create a label. And in order to maintain this tutorial as simple as possible, I'm gonna use the exact HTML standard of WordPress. So I'm gonna create a meta box that looks like a pre-built WordPress uh, box, a pre-built WordPress uh, function. So I'm not gonna create a custom look for this box, but you can totally do it with uh, by editing CSS and mm. applying standard, mm -hmm. applying your own classes to these standard HTML strings. Mm -hmm. So let's create this label. Let's put a label for, and let's put the ID has to be, of course, a unique ID. So I'm gonna use sunset underscore contact underscore email underscore field. And as you notice here, that could be confusing because we are using a lot of this sunset contact email. We have the sunset contact email callback. We have the sunset contact email meta box nonce. We have the sunset save email data, yeah, the like unique it. string contact email value K. And now we have another ID. So we have a lot of different options, a lot of different IDs and keys. Unfortunately, this is how the meta box works. Oh, okay, and we have to create all these different IDs oh. and all these different fields to uh, properly use the meta box. So if you get confused, try to, uh, as I'm doing right now, try to put as uh, an append every time you write a unique ID or a unique string of what is this string for. So in this case, this is a callback. Let's put callback at the end. This is a nonce. Let's put the nonce at the end. This is the value K. Let's put value K. This is the field. Let's put field. So even if you're using always sunset contact email, we can put as a, uh, an append. I can say sorry. Um, <coughs> Det er fordi, jeg lige ser Maura en M skrive, øh, så der function, what? Ja, det er rigtigt. Øh, det er rigtigt, det der. Øh, det, jeg snakker om, det er, at vi kan skrive, i stedet for at skrive det på den måde der, så kan vi give den mere typestærkhed, så sige for eksempel, øh, i den her tilfælde her, siden, det er nej, for eksempel her, ja, så kan man se for eksempel string, og så den der for eksempel, eller... Men for eksempel hvis nu vi vidste, at det, det var en string, så ville vi sige, at det, her, det skulle være en string, og så skal vi gøre sådan her. Det er rigtigt, og det har du helt ret i. Øhm... Nu skal jeg lige se, hvad han sagde. Så, hvad hedder det? Oh shit. Det er fordi, min mobil den ryger ud hele tiden, når man ikke gør sådan her, og sådan der. Sådan der, og så sådan der. Øh, og med function word, så... Ja, ja, det er rigtigt. Det har du helt ret i. Øhm... Hvad hedder det? Grund til, at jeg ikke gør det lige nu, det er på grund af, hvis nu... I kan lige se, hvordan det fungerer. Hvis nu jeg laver den her post meta box her igen. Uh, post meta. Ikke? Uh, fordi jeg har en plugin, som gør det her for mig. Og ja, det er fordi, jeg bruger uh, Visual Studio Code. Og så tilfældigvis, så hvis nu jeg gør sådan her, så laver den det på den måde der. Hvilket irriterer mig lidt. Uh, der hvor du deklarerer funktionen. Nå! Okay, det er der du mener. Okay, okay. Ja. Øh, ja, du mener her for eksempel, så skal den hedde string. Problem med er dog her, i det her tilfælde her, det er at jeg ikke helt ved, hvad post 
har for en type af, hvad hedder det, af variabel. Så det er lidt svært for mig lige at vide, om hvad for en funktionalitet det er. Øhm Ja, for eksempel post id, det kunne være en, for eksempel en int, for eksempel heroppe. Det er rigtigt. Så, ja okay, det er fint nok. Men, øh... Ja, ja. Det var bare... Det er, fint, det er et fint tip, det der faktisk. Det er rigtigt. Det kunne godt være, at det hjælper lidt mere med øh, at finde ud af, hvad der skulle være hvad. Det er rigtigt nok. Contact email value key to be, of course, a unique ID field. And as you notice here, that could be confusing because we are using a lot this sunset contact email. We have the sunset contact email callback. We have the sunset contact email meta box nonce. We have the sunset. Oh, I could also learn in get type. Ah. Yep. No, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, for if you know that, <laughs> it could be nice, actually. Actually, you know what? That will I do. Uh, before I do something, so I'll do this here. Save. Let's go there. Let's go there. And then we open a new tab. No. Vi åbner et nyt private tab, fordi jeg skal lige gå ind i min, oh, jeg skal gå ind i min uh, localhost test, og så hedder den den der, for jeg skal lige logge ind først også. Uh, så, det kan, så kan jeg faktisk godt gøre det der, det er rigtigt. Så hvis jeg gør sådan her, uh, og så siger vi, jeg tror det er min kode, yes. Så vi kan lige gå igennem det her, resten, ikke resten af den her, men lige indtil han selv viser hjemmesiden, så kan jeg ligesom prøve at se, hvad det kommer til at være. Email data, the unique string, contact email value k, and now we have another ID, so we have a lot of different options, a lot of different IDs and keys. Unfortunately, this is how the meta box works, and we have to create all these different IDs and all these different fields to uh, properly use the meta box. So if you get confused, try to, uh, as I'm doing right now, try to put as uh, an append, every time you write a unique ID or a unique string of what is this string for. So in this case, this is a callback, let's put callback at the end. This is a nonce, let's put the nonce at the end. This is the value k, let's put value k. This is the yeah, field, let's put field. So even if you're using always sunset contact email, we can put as a, uh, an append whatever type of string ID field we're using to try to keep everything as clear as possible. So let's close the echo with a semicolon. Mm -hmm. Inside here we can put user email address and let's close the label string. Oh shit. Semicolon as I said before. Yeah. And here we can echo again the actual input field. So let's call label for care. Let's write input type, I want this input to be email. We can use HTML5 to specify this, this input has to be email, so it's gonna have uh, its own validation even if we manually add something. If the email address is not correct, it's not a legit email address, the uh, HTML5 uh, field, text type, input type, is gonna trigger an error. It's kind of like standard. You can put a standard text, but we can use HTML5 Sometimes, not everywhere, but if we can use it, especially in the back end, it's a good thing. Yeah, Let's put the ID, and the ID has to be identical of the for the ID that we specified here in the label. So it's sunset contact email field, and the name has to be identical to the ID. And the value, now we can put finally the value that we retrieved before the get post meta, the actual value key that is connected to our post. Of course, in the first case, in our case, it's going to be completely empty what we needed. Before printing the value, as usual here in a PHP function, we put single quote to uh, interrupt the string of the echo. We put two dots to connect string mm -hmm. and variable. Uh, you should already know that if you're following my tutorial. And But instead of just printing the value here, this value can uh, contain some weird HTML stuff. We we don't really know. We It's related to uh, an so user yeah, input, so something that a user externally from our administration panel wrote inside um, this field. It's always better to escape yeah, the that. attribute with the pre-built functionality here to escape the attribute. So in this way, we're going to sanitize a little bit this value and we're going to avoid it to have a bad surprises. As a last value, I'm going to use a pre-built value of WordPress that is usual um, standard WordPress meta box input value and it's the, the size okay, of okay. 25. So Hold I'm on. specifying Hold the up. size of this input field. Let's close the input with a forward slash and uh, this uh, bigger than symbol and semicolon at the end. So in this way we're going to sanitize a little bit this value and we're going to avoid to have bad surprises. 
as a last value, I'm going to use a pre-built value of WordPress that is usual um, standard WordPress Metabox input value, and it's the size of 25. So I'm specifying the size of this input field. Huh? Let's Perfect. close the input with a forward slash and uh, this uh, bigger than symbol and semicolon at the end. Mm -hmm. And we wrote the entire callback function to generate a nonce, retrieve the value that it saved inside this Metabox, and printing the actual input of this Metabox. Yes. Now what we have to do, we have to finally call the hook to activate this function and activate the actual add meta box. What I said before, I want the hook to be inside if contact it's equal one. So if the contact form is actually active, I can use the action to activate my uh, function to generate the meta box. So the usual hook is add action and the name of the action that I want to use and have to use to trigger a meta box is add underscore meta underscore boxes of course as usual the logic of wordpress is pretty straightforward no, and inside here as a string as usual i have to uh, print i have to put the function name that i want to call so the sunset contact add meta box boom save it yes. let's go back in our administration panel let's refresh whatever page okay and now we have the user okay wait so email det var da interessant nok. Okay, øhm, og hvor var det, han var henne? Han var i... Hvor han helt præcist? Han var i... Messages, ja. Altså, på, øh, messages. Så burde den meget gerne være... Hernede. Nej, hvis jeg åbner... Jeg skal åbne en ny. Eller ikke åbne den. Nej. Er den new? Okay, øh... Okay, så den virker ikke he... Ja, user mail. Den har jeg ikke her. Er der nogen, der sender et kommentar måske? No, 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 no. I don't get the admin box to work inside. That should be blah, blah, blah. Så lad os lige se her, hvorfor at den ikke virker. Hvorfor kan jeg ikke live chat? Sådan der. Øh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, if you did that WordPress service, saves your layout in a specific order, no matter what. It saves that order in DBS Siri. Nogle synes du nu, hvis du... Hvad? Huh? Okay, men af den grund så virker det ikke, så lad os lige prøve at gå tilbage til messages her. Fuld med e-mail, bla bla bla, så den virker. Uh, så hvis vi går tilbage herover i den store skærm. Den her skulle meget gerne at det. Og, er det ikke fordi jeg ikke sætter det, er det det? Jeg vil prøve at se. Oh, ups, jeg gav sted. Den der. No, no. Og det er også, han havde den i, ja han havde den inde i hans messages, så hvis vi åbner for eksempel den her, så burde den meget gerne være der nu, men der er den så ikke. Um, så det må jeg lige finde ud af hvorfor. Um, lad os se her. Add metabox, det er det den hedder, det er action. Og jeg skal jo kalde på den action, right? Add action, add metabox. Den har jeg da, ikke? Så... Den skulle meget gerne add den der. Okay, lad mig prøve at gå tilbage ind til den her side. Use and I do add metabox. Boom, save it. Let's go back in our so the sun. Now boxes. Ja, okay, det skulle give nogen forskel, men altså... Eller gør det det? Hvis det giver en forskel, så... So I have no idea why. Men okay. Nope. Virker ikke. Du tilføjer flere funktioner. Uh, du tilføjer gennem flere funktioner. Det du skal... Er ikke se det funktionerne, indtil du finder den funktion, der ikke tilføjer den action. Uh. Er, det, er det sådan, man... 
debugger i WordPress. Jesus Christ. Okay, øhm. Um. Ja. Yeah. Jeg skal lige prøve at se så. Så hvis nu jeg gør sådan her. Og så siger jeg bare. Jeg mener, jeg burde kunne. Hvis jeg ikke sætter. Så mener jeg også, jeg burde kunne. Ja, netop. Callback. Øh. Uh. Men jeg tror du ikke, jeg tror det er mere besværligt end det Fordi man kan ikke bare gøre det på den måde, tror jeg Men lad os lige prøve, nu har jeg gemt det ikke, jo jeg har gemt det Så lad os prøve at gå tilbage her, så lige det der Jeg ja, kalder det ikke her Så, åh oh. Shit Så hvis nu vi går op til den her Så det, det var der, I guess Eller så det Jeg kan bare sådan her stedet for, det er lidt at exit uh. Ja, fordi, bare fordi du exit, tror jeg ikke, at det virker på den måde. Øh... Åh, oh, jo, det gør det faktisk. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, jeg sige. Så hvis vi nu går herinde, og så gør det samme. Ah, okay. Så det ser vist ud til at... Ja, jeg havde... Jeg havde... Jeg sagde, åh, oh, WordPress, ikke WordPress, ja. Yeah. <laughs> Ja, uh, yeah, sådan er det jo, når man skal til praktik jo. Uh, WordPress er grunden til, at de fleste bruger, jeg hedder PHP. Jeg hedder POP. De får aldrig rørt de nice, nye, lækre fiser, som PHP kan tilbyde, fordi det går så latterligt og meget op i back backward compatibility. Det er rigtigt. Uh, en af grunden til, at jeg hedder POP, det er fordi... Word, eller hvad hedder det? Generelt POP, det er meget... Hvad hedder det? Hvad skal man sige? Jeg tror, jeg har en idé, hvorfor det ikke virker. Øhm, grunden til, at jeg havde at POP, det er fordi, det er, hvad skal man sige, en eller anden mærkelig, hvad hedder det, form for switzer knife, altså det der Swiss Army knife der, som gør, at, at det er meget svært at, hvad hedder det, at bruge det som et rigtigt værktøj. Jeg forbinder det altid med sådan noget som at uh, C-Sharp for eksempel, det er en værktøjskasse, hvor du har en hammer, og du har en skruetrækker og alt sådan noget der, ikke? Mens at POP, det er sådan meget en svitser, øh, svejserkniv, hvor du har bare alle mulige forskellige værktøjer. Du ved ikke, hvordan du bruger dem, men du bruger dem bare, og så fungerer det agtigt. Øh, det, det er sådan det, jeg sammenligner det med. C-Sharp for eksempel, det er meget nemmere at vide, hvad for nogle funktionaliteter hører til hvad, og hvordan det skal sættes op. Mens POP, det er så meget fleksibelt og alsidigt. Men hey, altså, det, det er jo nemt for folk at komme i gang med det, men du kan bare... FUCK det rigtig meget op med resten af koden. Og WordPress er en af de, efter min mening også, dårlige implementationer af POP. Der er jo sådan noget som Laravel, som er lidt mere objektorienteret. Og det er jo mega nice. Men uh, anyways, let's get back to this coding debugging thing. Men okay, okay. Uh, den virkede her. Den er med boxen. Så af den grund, så gider den ikke at den her. Så det er det, der er spørgsmål for, at det ikke virker. Øhm, jeg kunne forestille mig, hvad er det nu, den her det var. Jeg mener, det er den. Jeg er ikke sikker. Det kan godt være den. Så lad os prøve. Ja, jeg tænkte nok. Øhm, I en tidligere episode, øhm, der havde jeg den samme problem. Og jeg mener, jeg skrev den et eller andet sted heroppe. Øhm... Nå, det var ikke den der. Ja, den der. Fordi... Når jeg registrerer en posttype, så kunne jeg ikke skrive en streg på den her, for, og så virkede den ikke. Og grund til, at øh, ja, netop så kunne vi se, at den skulle reflektere det i Sunset Contact Hooken. Så hvis vi går ind i Sunset Contact Hooken, et eller andet sted. Hvor er adfilteren? Ja, adfilteren her. Øh, han snakkede om, at den her del, det var en form for custom post type id ting, og af en grund, så var det, at man skulle skrive, så skrev han en streg der. Øhm, det kan vi også se på hans øh, kode, hvad man hedder det, på hans github kode, øhm, hvis er folk er interesseret i det, så kan vi kigge videre på det. Men, hvad hedder det, af en grund, så da jeg skrev en streg der, så skulle den reflektere det, det hernede, men det virkede ikke. Så da jeg skrev det med underscore, så virkede det. Så det er noget, jeg lige skal huske mig selv på. Øh, men nu virker det. Øh, yes, yes. Så det vi gør, det går tilbage igen. 
Let's look at the rest again. Now, let's refresh whatever page. And now we have the user email contact field. Here we have the user email address with, of course, nothing saved inside. We can style a little bit more this thing. We can put maybe a column, a little bit of space, maybe write address in a proper way and just avoid spelling mistake. And let's go back here, refresh it, and now it looks slightly better. So by default, WordPress is putting a new generated address in a proper way and just avoid spelling mistake. Oh, uh, let's go back here, it refresh it, and now it looks slightly better. So by default, WordPress is putting a new generated meta box at the end of whatever we have. So if we're using plugins or Yoast SEO plugin or whatever other, we have an excerpt here, your custom meta box is going to appear by default always at the bottom, mm -hmm. always at the center. Mm -hmm. But what if we want this on top of everything or we want this on the sidebar mm -hmm. we can easily do it by using the last two options that i skipped oh. previously for the add meta box function yeah, okay. so if you remember the last two options were the context and the priority the context is necessary to specify in which part of the page i want my meta box to be and you have three options so the first option is normal and if we put normal as a context and we go and take a look we refresh it of course is normal is here because it's the normal the standard status of the generation of wordpress where is this thing going to be print if we want to put it on the side the parameter that we can use as a context of course is side and that is what i want to use so if we refresh here we're going to notice that our user email input field it just magically moved on the side so we're going to have everything here now. um it's all i have yeah um symphony the så det er bygget på Symfony Packer. Åh oh, ja. Yeah. Jeg mener, jeg har hørt om det. Um, jeg har så ikke selv arbejdet med det. Jeg arbejder selv mest med, uh, hvad er det, c og sådan noget der. Um, så so, jeg kender ikke så meget til de her uh, pakker, der er i POP. Jeg er selv i gang med at, hvad hedder det, at arbejde med VIP, uh, hvad hedder det, eller Web Components, og sådan noget, sådan noget som, hvad hedder det, View, og sådan noget, som, ikke er, bas som er baseret på det. Um, Node og sådan noget der, det er mest det jeg arbejder med um, Så jeg, tænk, jeg synes nemlig at sådan noget som WordPress og POP Det, jeg ved ikke om hvor besværligt det er Men jeg synes det er lidt svært at, at arbejde med POP Når man skal lave det som en form for <laughs> POP for voksne Ja <laughs> yeah, okay, I get it, okay fair enough Oh shit, <laughs> um, hvad hedder det for mig, der er det mere, at jeg synes, når man skal arbejde med Vue og Angular og de andre web frameworks, de er nemmere at arbejde med, fordi de er nemmere at integrere, øh, ikke integrere, men med, det, de er nemmere at lave det til en, nu kan jeg ikke huske, hvad det hed, øh, uden, for søren, nu kan jeg ikke huske, hvad det hed, øh, lave dem om til web, uh, web components og sådan noget, så man kan lave det om til progressive web apps. Det er det, der var udtrykket her. Um, jeg ved ikke helt... Jeg har ikke undersøgt det. Ja, der er sikkert måder at lave, hvad hedder det, symphony med uh, web components, om til web components og sådan noget som progressive web apps og sådan noget der. Det ved jeg ikke helt, om man kan med POP siden det server side, men I don't know. Um, og, man, og kan man godt gøre sådan noget? Ved du det egentlig? Nicely organized, and that's what we wanted. We have the other parameter where you can specify the sixth parameter that is the priority. And the priority has four options, high, core, default, or low. So if we put, of course, the default is gonna appear whatever WordPress wants. If we put high and we save it and we take a look, refresh, you will notice that because we put high is actually on top of everything. So by default, we can put maybe this is an advanced position high if I want the email to be right underneath the text. The title, I can put normal, but as I said before, I want to be on a side mm, and yeah, on a default position. So let's put default or we can default. avoid to specify whatever value because the default value of the meta box is actually oh, default. Yeah. So let's save it on the side, oh, let's yeah, refresh it and it's back in this position. So you can play with these settings and functionalities and see where you want your meta box to appear in which position. So now, of course, if you write something like Alex at something.com, and we update, 
the post oh. is updated with a whatever option, but here False nothing gets updated, something. so we are losing, we're not maintaining whatever value, because of course we didn't create the actual function to save our meta box. And if you remember here in the nonce field, we specified a unique function name that is the sunset save email data. So that's what we're gonna use to save our data. And because this is generic, I wanna actually rename this to sunset save contact underscore email data so it's more obvious that's what i'm doing so let's copy the string that's specified here and let's create again a function with the same string and inside here we can put brackets inside the brackets we can pass the post id variable basically the nonce will pass automatically to the string the post id of whatever post we are updating so it's pretty good <laughs> curly brackets open the curly brackets and inside here we have to do a lot of things we have to check a lot of stuff and it's gonna be kind of slightly confusing but follow me so first we have to do a lot of security tests so we have to check with an if statement if exclamation mark to say that he's not if is not mm. is set so if he's not set the dollar post no square brackets we have to check if yeah, the nonce is not set so these nonce that we are generating here this is the unique string name of the nonce if this is not set so we are checking if whatever post message when we save something when we save uh, a post a page or whatever wordpress is going to send all this information with a post method of php so inside this post method we can retrieve okay. if this nonce that we generated here it exists and this variable is checking if this nonce is not existing open the curly brackets we can just put a hard return so we're gonna stop the function if this meta box the nonce meta box doesn't exist just stop the function with a return so we will avoid to save whatever information to update our post if this nonce mm -hmm. it doesn't exist so it means that the action wasn't uh, actually launched by an administrator the no, other yeah, check oops not a single quote. the other check that i want to do it is if the nonce is valid so i have to put another if exclamation mark to revert of course if it's not valid and we can use a pre-built function of wordpress that checks automatically for us if the actual nonce that has been generated here is a valid nonce generated by wordpress and not generated manually by an hacker or another mm. user so yeah, okay, okay. let's use this function called wp underscore verify underscore nonce and inside here we have to specify two parameters the actual nonce that is exactly identical to this one so the post nonce that is passing the second value is uh, the actual function okay hold up det der gider jeg ikke um, det jeg gør i stedet for det jeg gør sådan her så siger vi lige øh uh, vi laver det om til variabel i stedet for post eller uh, nonce så siger vi sådan der og selvom hvis den ikke var sat den der så ville den her også blive ikke sat så i stedet for at gøre det der så siger vi bare det der og Umiddelbart så ligner det skrænt string, så det jeg kan gøre section, ja. That is saving my meta box, so is the name of this very own function. Oh, uh, Let's put it. Oops, 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 give me a sec. Hvis den der ikke er sat, så kan vi fortsætte. Yeah. Put here. And of course, also if the WP verify nonce returns false, so is not... Uh. Og så skal vi have den her contact, save, contact, email that, yes. Så det vi gør, det vi gør sådan her, så siger vi ding, ding, ding. True. Let's put a hard return and let's stop this function, this saving function to be a uh, trigger. Okay. The other check that I want to do, I want to verify if this is an auto save or is uh, a manual save because if you know WordPress sometimes while you're editing a blog post is if you spend a lot of time here and you write stuff WordPress sometimes will uh, roll you will notice maybe a little icon that it's saving the draft so for us it's saving multiple revisions of mm -hmm, the same mm -hmm. post this is really useful but maybe for this email we don't want to actually save this information if is an auto save if it's not something mm -hmm. that the user is yeah. actually clicking on the save button so we can check if is defined and the global variable it's a, a global value specified by wordpress at the beginning this global variable is doing underscore <coughs> auto save and 
double ampersand is doing autosave is actually specified it actually exists so if it's defined and it's something here so it's not false it's not like completely empty we have to return it so it means that if WordPress is doing the autosave and it's saving by itself the information we don't want to save the meta box so return it of course you can totally remove this one if you want also the uh, meta box to be saved automatically with the autosave but uh, for as a safety precaution it's better to avoid it the other check we have to, before saving, we have another couple of checks. So we have to check if mm -hmm. the user has the actual permission to uh, write, to update, and to change the options of whatever information inside this meta box. So let's check for user's permission with if exclamation mark as usual to check if is not. We can check with a pre-made file. I think I'll come to refactorize this here because it sounds a bit molebarbed. What we could do is take all these functionalities and set them in variables and then make one. F-sætning, det er måske lidt bedre, hvad hedder det, code-wise, måske ikke så meget readability-mæssigt, men det er i hvert fald lidt lettere at så holde styr på det, i stedet for at ti F-sætninger på den måde. Function of WordPress, if a user, the current user, has the ability, the capability of editing a post, so we can check it with a function called current, uh, maybe right, current underscore user underscore can. So if the user can, as a first parameter, edit underscore the post, and the second parameter has to be the post ID that we're passing. So we're checking if the user can edit this post and we're putting the exclamation mark to say if the user cannot edit this post. Also in this case, let's put on hard return to avoid to fulfill this saving application. Okay, now what we have to do, finally, we have to retrieve the data that has been passed. So also in this case, we have to put an F is set so we are checking again inside the post variable of PHP if it's set our field whatever field we're putting here and the field has to be the exact same ID that is specified in the input or the ID or the name these two variable uh, these two parameters should be always identical so let's grab the name ID whatever is the same so if is not set this thing we can also in this way okay um, let me close, 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 close. Uh, post and then we also take the field and the field and get set. Yeah, that's quite a mistake for it. Okay. Return and avoid to trigger whatever function we're gonna trigger finally right now. So we're checking if the actual saving of the post is passing this uh, contact email field. If it's not passing, we don't have to trigger the option to save it. So we are pretty good. Now we checked with this one, two, three, four, five options, all the uh, pretty standard safety precaution of WordPress. We checked if the meta box exists, if the non exists, if it's doing an autosave, if the user is has the capability to do that, and if we actually have the value. So if we have the post value of this mm -hmm. uh, custom meta box. Now we can finally create a variable called my underscore data or whatever name you want to give to this variable. And we can collect this post contact email field. Before connecting though, and semicolon at the end, maybe let's put the dollar sign. Before collecting, uh, before saving and updating the post, I want to sanitize this text field. So let's use the pre-built function of WordPress called sanitize underscore text underscore field. Put it here. Sanitize put it inside the brackets. Text. So we are pretty Ooh. good with whatever information. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, sani text field okay uh, okay uh, so string in there about in here you hope I get it got elf long something huh the user is going to input. Of course, we're going to do some check also in the front end to avoid that the user is putting some level encode inside our input field. But even if we are checking this, let's always sanitize this text field to be sure that nothing wrong is going to be saved mm -hmm. inside our database. And finally, we can call the function called update underscore post underscore meta. And the update underscore meta accepts four variables. We have to use just three variables. So the last one, we don't need it. The first is the post ID that mm -hmm. if you know, we actually have it inside here. So let's specify the post ID. So update the data on this post ID. We need to specify the key 
of whatever data we created. So we actually need the meta box key, the get post meta that we created here. So the contact email value key, because we're going to store this field inside this meta key. So we're going to save this meta key as a string. And then we have to pass the value that we want to say. Then in my case, is uh, Nu skal vi se, om jeg kan finde den. Hvad hedder det? Hvor er den henne? Og jeg kan også bare gøre sådan her. Uh, contact. Uh, email. Right? Nå, no, jeg kan også bare sige value key. Value key. There we go. Sådan er der. Uh, så det vi godt gøre sådan her. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, sådan der, sådan der, og sådan der. Yes. The variable my data that contains the email information and semicolon at the end. Finally, now we have to create a hook to save the post. And also in this case, I want to put this action inside the if statement here to be sure that this action is not going to be useful or usable if the contact form is not active. So mm -hmm. let's call add action. And this action is going to be triggered during the save underscore post. Uh, timing of WordPress and the action that I want to call, of course, is the saving function that I just created, the sunset save. Mm -hmm. Put it here as a string, saves contact email data and semicolon at the end. So we go in there and then go really up. So we are not ready with this tutorial. Save it. Let's go back in our administration panel. Let's refresh it. Let's write Alex at something.com update and the post as updated and we have finally the email here so if we refresh we go back here we go back inside we have the information here so we finally finally after all these checks created a meta box we need a custom value a custom information and we are storing this meta box with this post so this meta box belongs to this post we go back here yeah after all these checks we have the inf the Let's write Alex at something.com update no, up there, okay. and the post as updated and we have finally the email here. So if we refresh, we go back mm -hmm. here, we go back inside, we have the information here. So we finally, finally, after all these checks, created a meta box with a custom value, a custom information, and we are storing this meta box with this post. So this meta box belongs to this post. So what I want to do now to conclude, I want to print the email information, the email address here in the column. To do that, it's pretty simple. I need just basically to reuse this code that I'm using to retry the, the data. So let's copy these and let's go in the section. Oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> retry the, the data. So let's copy these. So we should not soon get post meta. And let's go in the section that I use to customize the column that are appearing in my main page of the messages custom post type. So instead here in the case of the email, instead of echoing the email address, I can just create a variable called email equal get post meta. Instead of post ID inside here, I have already the ID printed safely here. So let's replace this variable. This is the actual value key and I have the truth to specify that it's a single and then I can Finally, safely echo this variable. Save it. Let's go back in our. Alright, I'm really distracted for a moment. Okay, uh, see about echo. <laughs> Not really email. Uh, email, something like. Yeah. And then I can finally safely echo this variable. Save it. Let's go back in our administration panel, refresh it, mm. and we have the email here. Yeah. If we want, also we yes. have full control here to put. Uh, whatever HTML string to make this email clickable. So a href equal mail to column. Let's reuse the email. Let's close the a tag. Let's put a dot to connect the string. Dot oh, single quote oh. and close the a tag. Save it. Let's go back in our administration panel. Okay, okay, hold on. So if you got this here. First, so, then there. Yes. So, mail to. Uh, 
stopper vi den, hvis vi tager den der. Øh. Og så siger vi punktum der, og så siger vi, jeg ved ikke om, ja den hedder bare mail to, og det skal være i den der, yes. Og så stopper vi den der, der. og så siger vi, åh, oh, øh. E-mail igen. E-mail. Sådan der. Øh, yes. Så. A. Sådan der. And close the A tag. Save it. Let's go back in our administration panel, refresh it, and now oh, this shit. one is linked that it's connected directly. Stop. Oh, wait, wait. Uh. Oh, yeah, the video stopped. I can't stop it there. Sådan der. Bam. Så nu burde det meget gerne virke. Mm. To the email. So if we click here, it's gonna open our email software, email client, mm -hmm. with this email already input in the uh, recipient field. And of course, if I create a new one and I put like maybe Carl and I say awful tutorial, this was too long. <laughs> Uh, I'm a douche, so this one is a douche at <laughs> douche.com. I got the sin self aware, muscle. I don't know, I think it's kind of douche. These actually uh, okay. 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 website it's exists. Cool. I think so, but publish it. We go back in our, of course, everything is properly saved. We go back in our messages, and of course, here we have different information, and we have the email of our douche Carl that wrote, uh, even incorrectly spelled awful. So, awful. It's right now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't know how to write anymore. Anyway, you notice here we created a custom meta box to store our email address, and we are printing this custom meta box outside. So now you know you have the knowledge to create inside your custom post type whatever information you want to mm -hmm. save and you want to give the user the ability to save, and then you can use this information and print it also as columns outside, so you can completely customize the experience of your custom post type. So it's pretty much it for. Uh, Inden vi slutter, så vil jeg gerne lige prøve at se, om det ser godt sådan her. Og så finder vi ud af, hvad posttypen for den her den er. Um, apparently, så det kan jeg ikke finde ud af. Uh, jeg har en anden idé. Vi kan bare sige echo i stedet for. Så echo vi jo den bare. Uh, in before everything breaks. Eller... Apparently not. Huh, interesting. Okay, uh, så so, vi skal bare ikke sætte den på næste kodex. Jeg ved, der var dump. Uh, det kan man altid gøre også. Okay, lad os lige prøve en gang til. Hmm. Oh, der. Det er en type object. Oh well. Så kunne man skrive for eksempel object her, hvis man vil det. You don't say. No. Men øhm. Uh, det var det for den her tutorial. Um, I forhold til Maurens uh, tanker om, uh, at han ikke uh, han er undgår PVA'er, uh, for mig der er det sådan, at de er gode. T Jeg synes netop, at PVA'er de netop hjælper en med, at, altså også programmører, med at lave lidt mere generiske apps, som er lidt Google-agtige. Hvis man også bruger de der Googles, øh, hvad hedder det, temaer, som de tilbyder. Fordi det er mere eller mindre Google, der har fundet på Progressive Web Apps. Og de hjælper altså rigtig meget med os programmører at lave apps, både natively. Fordi når du er på en hjemmeside, så er det, du netop sørger for, at du kan lave hjemmesiden. Og så er det, du bare kan sørge for, at det bliver til en native app i stedet for. Og det hjælper altså meget på det, synes jeg. I stedet for, at man skal tænke så meget, at man skal tænke, hvordan man bruger for eksempel uh, geoskop, hvordan bruger man location, eller noget GP, uh, GPS og sådan noget mærkeligt, i selve appen, men man så bare kan gøre det hele i JavaScript, og så er det bare done. Og det synes jeg er mega fedt, nemlig sådan noget. Så jeg håber, at det her det var en interessant tutorial. Uh, jeg håber, at folk var interesserede i at kigge på det her. Uh, 
Jeg har gjort det en time nu, selvom den her den varede 50 minutter. I'm sorry. Øhm, men jeg håber alligevel, at folk var interesseret i den. Øhm, jeg kan godt lige fortsætte lidt mere med den næste tutorial, tænker jeg. Øhm, og igen, tak til Mauren for at lige give de her tips ud, for det er trænger til, synes jeg. Øhm, så ja, lad os lige prøve at se om... Det næste tutorial, det er 53 minutter. Jesus. Men, den skal overstås. Det skal gøres. Så so let's do this shit. So, hey, what's up guys? Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the lesson number 13 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look on how to create, finally, the last section of our administration panel before switching to uh, building the front end. Mm -hmm. And the last section is something I created at the beginning. I just created the name, the menu item in my custom admin menu bar, and it's the custom CSS section. So pretty much every theme has a custom CSS section. Also, uh, by default, WordPress in the appearance menu, in the submenu editor, has a custom CSS section. My goal is to create a custom CSS area with a nice text area that simulates a standard ID that could be like sublime text or brackets or coda, the same ID that I'm using, and uh, giving the users the ability to input safely some custom CSS and edit style a little bit their own sunset theme, or at least changing a little bit some aspect of the sunset theme that could be like background colors or link colors or something else more complicated if the user is savvy enough with CSS. Yes. So let's get started with this new amazing tutorial. Let's switch to our text editor. As usual, I'm using Coda by Panic. Let's access our um, usual function dash admin dot PHP file where we have all the administration page settings that we coded in the past lesson to create our custom section. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, mm. let me add some white space so it's going to be at the center of your screen. We already have the function that generates the content of the settings page that I called settings page. And Wait, what? Sunset. Oh, sunset custom CSS. No, sunset theme settings page. Not going to wait. Yeah. Hmm. So this is going to go here. No, that's not going to go Give me a sec. This for the use going down. So see we need sunset. Custom CSS. Ja, yeah, okay, det passer helt fint. Det passer. Fordi så er det netop herinde, siger bare Custom CSS. Selvfølgelig ekko det. Så kan vi bare lige gøre sådan noget. Damn. Godt tak. Øh, så lad os lige se tilbage til tutorialen. We get just the sunset custom CSS, an H1 echo that I'm echoing inside this page, as you can see here. What I want to do, I want to exactly do what I did for the last few pages, just simply requiring a custom template, a custom PHP file with all the settings that I want. So I can simply copy this code, remove all the space that I don't need, paste oh. it here, indent the brackets, and change the name of this file. So sunset. Wait, what? No. I'm going to use custom dash CSS. Save it. Let's go back in our file view and let's. Sunset custom CSS. Custom CSS. To. To is a tag. No. There we go. Let's grab, for example, the sunset contact form and let's duplicate this file. Let's re uh, sunset. name this file with sunset custom dash CSS. Access the file, change the title sunset. Sunset custom CSS. Custom CSS or uppercase. Here we can leave everything. We have to change a little bit these two parts, but before changing, we have to create the specific settings fields and a specific setting action. So we will know which ID and unique name we have to call in this section. So let's go back to the function dash admin.php. Let's scroll back up to the section to the function called sunset custom settings. And in here we have all the separated, nicely separated with our comments for the sidebar option, the theme support options, and the content for options. What I want to do, I want to recreate the basically exact same thing for that I did for the contact form option. So I can reach and new settings before let's boot. Wait, what? Uh... Let's go to the save node. Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Jeg gør det lidt anderledes, nemlig. Fordi øh, mange veje blandt går igen. Det han gør, det er... What the fuck? Hm. Øh, det han gør, som er virkelig åndssvagt, det er... Han copy-paster det samme igen og igen. Jeg har gjort det lidt mere convenient for mig selv også at lave det. Så det vi gør, det vi bare gør sådan her. Øh, op til her. Lidt lettere. Så siger vi lige her noget biom, og så siger vi... Custom CSS. Ja, vi ved ikke lige helt, hvad jeg skal gøre nu, men det finder vi ud af lige om lidt, I guess. Um, comment for custom CSS options. The option name is sunset underscore CSS. I don't need any callback function here. Let's add a settings section and the string ID is the unique ID that I have to create, so sunset. Oh, oh fuck. Uh, bam, let's just see, bam. Dash, custom, dash, CSS, oops, CSS, dash, section. The title has to be pretty much identical to... Uh, I should probably see if the whole thing So what we should do, the ID is the one that we say is custom, CSS, oh, shoot. Uh, custom CSS section. Uh, det skal lige have rettet på det her. Men det gør lige senere. Um, rum, altså custom CSS. Custom CSS. Det er meget lettere det her. Whatever we want. But in our case we are uh, writing manually writing the title the page so we can uh, use the same title or just something that it's useful for us to remember yeah, yeah. to remind us what are we doing in this section yeah, yeah. the callback function we have to create a callback function and I'm gonna call it sunset uh, custom CSS section underscore callback and as usual with single quote because it has to be a string and the page that I want to print this uh, new section has to be the same page that I'm writing this code, so the Sunset Custom CSS page. So I actually don't remember the idea of the page is this one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna search for this function, sun set theme, settings page, and I'm gonna check where I'm calling this function. So, so this function is generated here inside the Applicat Sun. Yeah, so the yeah, bar CSS. For DDS at submenu your page, dealing all the way. Yes, so they are like this one. Let's go. It's a CSS page, so I can copy this ID, that is the ID of the submenu page, scroll back down to my new setting section and input here the string page. So sometimes it's normal to get lost in your own code, especially if you're creating a lot of different functions, a lot of different settings. This is confusing. This is really confusing. Yeah. So always try to name your functions with a logic. So if a function is a callback, just callback. If uh, you're registering an option settings, just put options at the end of the unique ID. So it will be kind of easier to read it even after a couple of weeks or a month, or maybe next year you decide to update this whole theme. At least it's a better, better understandable even for yourself. So here, just to check, let's check the ID of the previous page. Yes, it's this one, so we are good to go. And as last option, we have to create a settings field that I have to use to save and register my custom field that is going to be the custom text data where a user is going to write its own CSS. So here, as an ID, as usual, uh, custom-css, the title, uh, insert your custom CSS, callback. Sunset underscore custom underscore CSS underscore callback. And the page, as usual, is the same page here. The section is the section that I just generated, so it's the unique ID that I created here. And I don't need to pass any arguments of array, so boom, semicolon at the end. And we created also the settings field with Sunset custom CSS mm -hmm. callback. Mm -hmm. Now I have to create these two callback functions. So let's check this callback function here. And we can copy this, and we can copy also these other one because are the two that I'm really interested in too. So let's copy this. Let's go down here. Uh, maybe no. Let's maintain all together. Okay. So this is the contact form. Stop lagging, please. Maybe call it at the end. And we created also the settings field with sus and customs. Yes, let's call back. Now I have to create these two callback functions. So let's check this callback function here. 
and we can copy this and we can copy also these other one because are the two that I'm really interesting to so let's copy Jesus Christ the label you know stop lagging please stop lagging tack uh, Jeg ikke twitter hit on. Vi skal op til... Contact section. Der vi gå. Og så har vi netop activate contact form, ikke? Jo. Nej. Sådan set activate contact. Men jeg har, mener jeg også har kaldt min bare contact, ikke? Jo. Jo, jo, det er det her. Så det er de der to. Oh shit. Sådan der. Bam. This. Let's go down here. Uh, maybe no. Let's maintain it all together. So this is the contact form. Let's scroll back up here. Let's paste it here. Let's rename this section. Boom. Custom CSS callback. I got cloudy for cat. It's then that's that. Boom. Boom, paste it here. Let's change the echo, whatever information we want to give to the user. If we want to write a title or not, if we want to leave this oh. section completely empty, we can just leave it empty or... Uh... Sunday, stop. Uh, okay. They make it warm today, it's just suit. Okay, uh, custom section callback. Section callback? I mean, I got called them. With my, but I'm going to be sure. Ah, there it is. Oh. There it is. Okay, cool. Let's go. Just write a return, but if we want to use this space, we can give more information like customize your theme with your own CSS, or maybe customize sunset theme with your own CSS. That's pretty pretty cool, right? You read something like that and say, yeah, let's customize it. Anyway, and the other function that I want to change is the sunset custom CSS callback. That is the callback function of the settings field. So I have to retrieve whatever register settings, whatever unique setting I created, and I have to print it back inside my label, text area, whatever I want. So First, let's retrieve, let's change the variable to CSS and let's remove the check because I don't need to check if the options is one, is checked, whatever is not a label. So the option that I have to retrieve, of course, is the register setting that I created before and the unique ID that I assigned to the settings is sunset underscore CSS. So get option. And here I can change for now, it's not going to be definitive, but for now I want to just show you what it's going to be. I want to just change this into a simple text area. So let's text area and then let's close the text area let's write a placeholder since a custom CSS the latest since you might know the hell on side let's go see how zero wait what sunset CSS oh I'll put a skip there Text area. Still got to go with some text area. Uh, text area. Some said custom CSS. Uh, there. Der er punktum C S S punktum der 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 tekst er ja sådan der stop it der går and the CSS here so um I want to do a check if empty dollar CSS so if this variable is completely empty I want to change the content of this variable with something else. So also in this case, I can use the contracted version of PHP if instead of writing the complete full if I can just write the variable CSS, then it's going to be if CSS is empty. So there's nothing inside my <laughs> content is going to be different than this other one. If it's not empty, so the second one, I can leave this CSS is equal to itself. I don't have to change the content, but if this variable is empty, I'm gonna write something like this: sunset theme custom 
CSS. And these two symbols are the um, forward slash and asterisk are. Wait, wait, wait. So. Uh, Everybody, we see our uh, CSS, CSS. Oh, it's the new scenario. You Wait, it's going to be mean, it's going to be very empty, right? Right, no, yeah, okay, the first is something more. Mean a master to make a good one. Okay, this is your version of mean, mean. Mm. <coughs> I don't know if it works. Now we find out what CSS. Ellers, so how about CSS and some uh, symbols to create a comment in a CSS file? So automatically, this section is going to be pre-populated with a fake CSS comment. Let's save it. Let's go back in our administration panel. Let's refresh and see if I broke something. No, I didn't break anything, but this content form is called. That's why I broke them. Broke them there. Blah, 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 blah. Who knows? Oh, shoot. I think the knock. Oh, wait, what? No, I don't think I'm going to think that. that. Maybe we get I don't know. I thought, oh, what the hell? Okay, wait. No such file or directory in Sunset Custom. No, I definitely clipped that. I renamed it. Uh, can we rename that for? Nope. Okay. So there we go. We go in here. Also rename it. Yeah, it's quite a simple do then. Sunset. Uh, CSS. So that bam. That's a serial problem again. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Playing a different function. So it's not calling the activate contact form, it's actually calling the contact form function. So Sunset Custom CSS callback, Sunset Custom CSS callback. And here, what am I doing? Oh, sorry, I forgot to. Okay. <laughs> I forgot to change these values because my custom. Um, my template, the sunset custom CSS.php, is still calling the settings field of the contact form and the settings section of the contact form. So I have to change now the settings field with the last two settings sections. So the sunset custom CSS section and the uh, custom CSS option. So instead of sunset custom options, I have to call my new register settings. So the sunset custom CSS options. I'm missing just the sunset custom CSS options and do the settings instead the alicad sunset theme support. That is this one for the contact form option. I have to call the alicad sunset CSS because this one is the page that I'm calling Alicad Sunset CSS. Save it. Let's go back in our administration panel. Let's refresh it. And now we have the whatever option we specified here. So we have our inside here custom CSS, the custom area, because the CSS variable is empty, it's printing this fake CSS code. And we have our standard text area, then we can resize it, of course, if we want. But I can rest for the person. At Sunset CSS. Save it. Yeah. Let's go back in our yeah, yeah. administration so. panel. Let's refresh it. And now we have the whatever option we specified here. So we have our inside here custom CSS, the custom area, because the CSS variable is empty, it's printing this fake CSS code. And we have our standard text area, then we can resize it, of course, if we want. But it's kind of ugly. And it's not really a CSS area, it's just a really simple text area. So I can write everything. It's not recognized if I open like test and if I open the brackets and I hit enter. And I cannot use tabs to create spaces. I have to hmm. use the space bar. And it's kind of annoying because yep. it doesn't have line numbers or whatever. So let's style a little bit better this text area by using uh, an open source code to convert a text area or a div or whatever Brilliant. into a. Torch corner. It's going to check now. Could you again see on the right not them options or something? Sunset theme support, that is this one for the contact form option, I have to call the Alicad Sunset CSS because this one is the page that I'm calling Alicad 
Oh, it's it's not it's not it's not it's not it's not and I cannot use tabs to create spaces. I have to use the space bar and it's kind of annoying because it doesn't have line numbers or whatever. So let's style a little bit better this text area by using an open source code to convert a text area or a div or whatever into a proper IDE online, like a web ID. What I'm gonna use today is Haze. This page, you can find it to haze.c9.io is this high performance code editor for web. Uh, this Code editor is on GitHub. It's open source. You can use it for you can use it for your web project, and it's gonna convert whatever area into a custom web ID. I personally already downloaded Haze and put everything, all its source code, the minified version because it's lighter, of course, inside a folder called Haze inside my JavaScript folder, inside mm -hmm. my JS folder. So I'm pretty ready to go. I'm pretty set to go. I just need to use uh, the code uh, specified inside the guide and embed the Haze.js file whenever I'm using my custom CSS section. To do that, we have to access the NQ file that I created before, and we have to change it a little bit. So right now, the sunset load admin scripts is loading inside our administration. Okay, so it's good. Apparently go to Ace. I download them. And take it back on. It has to be done. I mean that yeah, under Hanun alternative to the Um Factis Climate Pono. Uh no lager in deal soon sir. Yeah. Yeah, my CPU for ultras percent, Jesus Christ. Okay, let me look at Hanun so it can be a lit. Oh look then hello. Yes. Okay, uh that's the same. So if you go here. Oh stop scrolling. Uh ace uh, I'm just gonna say yeah. Panel these scripts so right now this section is specific folder inside my JS folder. So I'm the mini custom C9.io C9.io Sorry, it's still long so it's not because it's then... huh. built for code. No, so it's a um, form for markup. Uh, okay. I see, I see, I see. So we're over. Uh, we can go in for alternative to the mid tip to add out. We can go alternative to to a coffee that they have. Uh, so high performance code editor. Okay. You know, I'm really langsam, so uh, Ace. Yeah, Ajax code editor. Det er simpelthen nogle andre ting, man kan bruge. Intel. Nå, det synes jeg ikke, tak. Uh, lad os sige open source det bedste. Og det er til webplatform, så det er bedst at bruge. Vi skal også have en til webplatform. Der. Silex. You can use it online or download it to host it yourself. Hvis nu vi siger self-hosted, så hvordan siger den det? Maketa. Nå, no, den er blevet discontinued. It can be self-hosted, download it, that's version, bla bla bla. Deal den, okay. Skal vi prøve at se på den her? Silex. Ah, der kommer til os. Silex is easy to learn. Best on open standards. Bla bla. Okay. The reviews. <laughs> I was seeking a website build for a friend. So it's made in flash. Oh, really? So it takes half a minute to load the page. Oh my god. It's magic. Okay. Uh, Lyder vist til at Ace det er det bedste lige indtil videre. Hvis det har det lavet i freaking flash. 
Oh, I see now. Yes, yes. I see what it is. Yeah, free website builder. It's gonna be given so. Oh, yeah, I see. Free. Oh, what is this? Time to learn the basics. Fear team. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yo, yo. Hmm. Uh, own your data. Die, drag and drop. That's static web page. So it's not. I just think I'll put the ace for the ace this year. I'm all lit on the Yeah. Ace and all lit on. Um, so this guy, they are download. Then I guess. So we can embed a guide in. No, I wish I go in here. Web ID. I personally already downloaded A's. Okay. Uh, the new side of it needs all the information along it. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. Where do I go? I think I can tell. I'm gonna still gonna do it. I don't care anymore. Excuse me, fuck us. I'm gonna tell you. Ja, yeah, nevermind, sorry. Det er fordi, jeg skulle lige se, om der var nogle kommentarer. Øh, blum, 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 blum. Ja, ja. Learn, hvordan... Okay. Så nu er det. Kan vi ikke løbe med pages? To get the pre-built pre -built version. And use the code below. Okay. Uh, now check out the... Wait, what? Let's go on host. You can use one of the pre-packaged versions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just copy one of the. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, and don't conflict version. Okay. You will see me in a fight version. Then the best. Uh, some way into project or use require.js to load the libs folder. Okay. Hmm. Man kunne overveje at bruge en CDN, faktisk. Men så kræver det også her online hele tiden. Det er sådan lidt... Nej, nej. Jeg vil gerne prøve at se, hvad jeg kan gøre det her. Men det er nogen konflikt. Uses require instead of... Hvad? No! Concatenate minified with uglyfy. And uses a.require instead of... Uh, instead of require, yeah, okay. Then I go there, boom. Okay, so this is good to be simplified by showing a low conflict. Oh, uh, still got, I guess, still about download them all some. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, um. But then, download we had some. I don't really I don't care. Uh, let's see about the type button. That's what we can skip. Can pro. And we skip pro here. Uh, huh? Okay, I guess we will go snap. This will be downloads, I guess. This is CRV. What if you need a spill? Sorry, ace. There one. Uh, extract to a new map is me kill for ace. So kill it and then. And that. Um, let's see if we. Bay after. I'll find what I will. No, it was. 
og nu konflikt versionen i mine fejl. Yes. Så det vi gør, det er, at vi copy den og mover den inde i CSS. Vi har åbnet containing folder. Uh-oh. Okay. Ja, vi kan. Nice. Og så siger vi bare... Uh, vi siger Ace. Rename. Ace. Sådan der. <laughs> Sådan der. Og så siger vi hvad... Og så tilføjer den, han, de den på den måde der. Det vi gør, det er at følge tutorialen. And put everything all its source code, the minified version, because it's lighter, of course, inside a folder called Haze, inside my JavaScript folder, inside my JS folder. So I'm pretty ready to go, I'm pretty set to go. I just need to use uh, the code uh, specified inside the guide and embed the Haze.js file whenever I'm using my custom CSS section. Mm -hmm. To do that, we have to access the NQ file that I created before, and we have to change it a little bit. So right now, the Sunset Load admin script is loading inside our administration panel. These scripts, these unique scripts, only if the top level page uh, is equal to Alec at Sunset. So our hook is equal to you feminine Q. I'm gonna be feminine in Q V. But that one, yeah. Yes. To top level page, Alec at Sansa. Otherwise, it's not gonna uh, enqueue anything else. What I have to do, I have to change this code to include this section, this uh, style and script and the WP enqueue yeah, yeah, guide and embed the ace dodge file that I created before, and we have to change it a little bit. So right now, the Sansa load admin script is loading inside our administration panel. These scripts, these unique scripts, only if the top level page uh, is equal to alloc at sunset. So our hook is equal to top level page alloc at sunset. Otherwise, it's not gonna uh, enqueue anything else. What I have to do, I have to change this code to include this section, this uh, style and script and the WP enqueue media function only if this page is the page that I'm interested into. Otherwise, if I'm in the custom CSS page, I have to include something else. So let's change a little bit the code and let's change it in equal. Open it. Let's paste it here. Let's close the brackets. Help. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So this is the air in hook. The foo? Wait, what? No, så du fjernede den der, og fjernede den der, og så går vi ned her og fjerner den der, right? Ja, lad os sige ellers, turn, bam, faktisk der, ellers. I'm gonna return this and let me indent this section. So now I have the option to create another else if and include other completely different scripts for my specific CSS section. So I can use else uh, before let's close the bracket, the curly brackets. Otherwise, let's write else if. Before writing this, though, I have to print the hook and check what's the name of the hook when I'm accessing my custom CSS page. So let's write hook, echo hook, let's go back in our administration panel, let's refresh it. Let's copy this section even if I'm not hook, let's go back in our administration panel, let's refresh it. Let's copy this section even if I'm not seeing it because it's underneath the sidebar, I can just copy it and paste it here. So let's um, comment the echo and leave it there because I could use it, I could need it in the future, so let's not remove it, let's paste. Okay, så det vi gør, det er, at vi siger echo hook, bam, bare lige for at finde ud af, om der er noget, okay. Så kommer vi tilbage igen, og så siger vi, øh, der, og så der. Okay, øhm, 25, forholds bare, så kan det være, det virker her. Yeah. Oops. 
There we go. Uh, så siger vi i stedet for den der, så gør vi sådan der, og så siger vi hooken er der. Right? Ja. Ja, else if. Uh, sunset blog. Oh, den der. Er lige med hooken. The sunset page I'll cut sunset CSS without a space is equal to hook panel. Let's refresh it. No. A version panel. Let's refresh it. Let's copy this section even if I'm not seeing it because it's underneath the sidebar. I can just copy it and paste it here. So let's um, comment the echo and leave it there because I could use it. I could need it in the future. So let's not remove it. Let's paste here the sunset page I'll cut sunset CSS without a space is equal to hook. Here I can open again the curly brackets and I can write whatever in queue I want. So let's save it. Let's check if something went wrong. So if I go in my sidebar theme, I have the custom CSS here. I recognize that something is customized, like it's including my CSS because this area is customized with a style that is not native of WordPress. So I recognize that something's going on here. The other pages, they don't inherit that specific section, that specific CSS is JavaScript because they don't have the same hook. And in the custom CSS here, I can specify another type of CSS, another type of source code. So in my case, I want to register the script of ACE. So let's go WP underscore register underscore script. And as a small trick, if you want, you can also use directly the in queue script to print directly all the information without writing register and then in queue. You could use the register to register some specific script and then in queue that script in multiple different sections without specifying again rewriting that all the options. But in my case, because I wanna, uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm really, really sure that I'm gonna in queue the hey script only in this page, I can use directly the WP in queue script and write everything inside this function. No, yeah, in queue so underscore. Yeah, Oops. Yeah. Underscore and a plus script. What's happening? Q script. The, the handle has to be a unique handle that is sunset underscore all. Just write haste because it's unique and pretty much not gonna have any issue. Let's write get template directory URI dot to connect the string dash dash um single quote forward slash js forward slash haste forward slash ace dot js that is the file that I need. Array has to be dependent to jQuery that it's by default included inside uh, the administration panel. The version of A, in my case, I downloaded the version 1.2.1, so I'm gonna write 1.2.1, and here I want to specify by true because I want this JavaScript code to be in the footer, so I don't need to. I'm just gonna say, huh? Sunset, uh, no, can we leave the term tag? Snowy bar in hell. Hmm. Oh, wait, uh, but then fin. Sorry for the new. Um. Oh, wait, two seconds. Uh, da. Right. Ace, no. Ace. This is an ace to JS. So we have two aces. Yeah, ace dot JS. Oh, the any ace is ace to JS. Yes, 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 yes. Oh yeah, wait, yeah. To enqueue the script again because I wrote basically all the information that I usually write inside the register script to just register in a script directly inside the enqueue script function. So this function is going to enqueue directly whatever information I wrote here without passing through a register script and grabbing the same handler name. Oh. After this, I want to enqueue another script that is going to be my custom script, enqueue script, and in my case, I want to write sunset custom CSS script. The search is gonna get pretty much the same, but let me copy oh, shit, all these options here because I'm gonna write pretty much the same thing and just change the file name sunset custom CSS. Yes. Uh, let's go see how. Uh, sunset custom CSS script. I don't screw that you. Sunset, cause no. 
sunset.custom css.js. Uh, let me use the underscore custom underscore css.js. Array, version one, true in the footer. And pretty much that's it. So now what I have to do, I have to create this file, the sunset custom css.js, otherwise mm -hmm. the system is gonna trigger an error. So let's duplicate this section and right. let's this file, let's change it to custom underscore CSS. Let's open it here. And the good thing about Ace is built on vanilla JavaScript, so it doesn't need actually jQuery to function. I can delete all this custom script and just write a variable called editor that is gonna be equal to ace.com edit and here I have to specify the unique ID of my editor that is going to be custom CSS and semicolon at the end to conclude if we access the embedding guide of the ace editing settings yeah to conclude if we access the embedding guide of the ace editing settings we can see custom CSS Back and moving, okay. If we access the embedding guide of the ACE editing settings, we can see here we have other options to set the theme or to set mode to JavaScript, CSS, or whatever we want. But we're gonna see later to see how the theme completely changes. For now, we're gonna leave it uh, really, really simple. So let's not worry about that. The other thing that I wanna do, let's reaccess back to our sure. editor. In my uh, function dash admin dot CSS, um, function dash admin.php instead of printing a text area I want to print actually the div so instead of printing text area with placeholder I'm going to print a div with the id it has to be the same id that I specified in the custom js and custom css.js to call the ace edit function so custom css is my unique id that I decided to specify for this section let's close the div uh, div <laughs> not the of let's save it Let's yeah, access back our administration button, and if we refresh it, everything disappears. Yeah, sorry, the free release, I can lose the free email. What did I say? It's a deal. Let's save it. Yeah, it's not for it's not about deal. So, ED, then it's going to be our custom CSS. So, how we. CSS put in like a slip me do. Do. Right? Let's try this to do. Yeah. Let's access back. Sorry. So. For administration panel, and if we refresh it, everything disappears. If we access the source code and we try to find whatever happened to our div editor, you will notice that here in the web inspector of your browser, there's actually something inside, but nothing is showing up because uh, Ace needs by default some CSS to style the size of this uh, section. So what I have to do, I have to enqueue another file, in this case, a uh, CSS file, to uh, customize this specific custom text area, custom div area. And also in this case, I can use directly the enqueue style to call all the functions in line without registering the style before. So in this case, I want to use ace again. So I know that I'm styling the ace section and the mixer search is going to be pretty much a Enqueue style, this one's a admin. <sighs> so an ace. Identical to this one, so let's copy all this section and paste it here. And instead of here, let's write sunset. Oh shit, uh, ace dot. You know, forget her. The uh, you can register script and in queue script. In queue script. Oh, in queue script. Damn it. It's really long, you know. If the editor tools stop us, for the ellers in the middle of my computer, I can tell them here. Okay, uh, so we... CSS, and let's leave everything else like this. Okay, save it. Q style is directory in scrolling your CSS. CSS slash sunset admin 
CSS. Og der er ikke nogen queries. Og det skal være all. Sådan der. Det skal være, ja. Sådan der. Sunset.ace.css. And let's leave everything else like this. Okay, save it. Let's go back in our file three, open the CSS section. Let's duplicate this file and instead of admin copy, let's name it ace.css. Here we can completely delete whatever we wrote here and let's use the same ID that we used before. So number sign or hashtag, hash, whatever, and custom CSS. And here I want to put a position relative and width of 500 pixel and height of other 400 pixel. Save it. Let's go back in our main panel, refresh it, and we have finally our custom CSS section. So if you notice here, even if Alright, so then hashtag custom CSS. The position relative with 500 pixels for pixels. Uh, also have the height so 500 pixels. Cool. David. Let's go back in our new panel, refresh it, and we have finally our custom CSS section. So if you notice here, even if Before the break up all the movie. Huh? Wait, what? Jeg ved ikke, hvad du er for. Fordi herinde... Hmm. Ja, den hedder Full Contact. Og den hedder Custom CSS. Okay, så det er rigtig nok. Jeg kan se, der står også Custom CSS der. Så hvis jeg går ind under Function Admin. Jeg tror grunden til, at den ikke virker, det er fordi jeg ikke har taget for den her. Så det vi gør, det er, at vi går ind under den her, så går vi op i toppen. Næsten. Så går vi i Register. Det er en settings der. Ja, jeg kan se, at den bliver der. Custom CSS, ja. Den hedder også Custom CSS her. Frame contact. Ah. Nej, det er stadig den samme sektion, så det er fint nok. Hmm. Jeg skal simpelthen finde den. Sunset theme options. Sunset contact section. Okay, jeg skal simpelthen alt kan ses andre steder på der. Nope, okay. Hvad med den her kan det ses andre steder?
Det er ikke. Det er det eneste sted, som det kan ses. Kåbækken for det. Det er den der. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So, den har rent faktisk spillet om på de to. Hvordan fin har den gjort det? Contact form. Okay, vi skal gå ind i... Function at me again, as I see it. Custom CSS. To destroy a king. Custom CSS and contact form and brew and heal and ah yes did I have? Yeah, a bit better to debug in the future. Oh. Sådan der. Sådan der, tak. Sådan boom. Og så burde det virke. Ja. Yeah. Og så kommer den her frem nu. Fordi så er det... Den her... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. CSS'en skal være der. Og nu har jeg byttet om på de to, ikke det? Jo. Sunset contact form. Sunset. Contact form. Mm. Sunset CSS. Hmm. Yeah, the custom CSS, custom CSS, custom CSS. Here up there, the contact form, contact form, contact section, custom CSS section. Okay. Nu så lad os lige tage ind i kontaktformen. Fin kontakt. Ja, ikke det den der. Står jeg ikke Jesus Christ. 
качество. Det ser rigtig ud af før. Og så går vi ned til admin panel igen. Okay, hvad var det her inde i lige før? Det var... Så det er godt. Wait. Har jeg virkelig kaldt den det? Jeg tror, jeg tror det er den er gældende, fordi det giver ikke mening, det der. Nå, lad os se. Lad os se. Jeg tror jeg kalder for film CSS. Nu skal vi være sikre. Så går jeg ind i os. Ja ikke. Det skal være sådan her. Nope. Okay, men så er vi nødt til at kigge igennem. Jesus Christ, okay. Til episode 13 ikke jo. Episode 13. Nu går jeg ned og... Der og så siger jeg... Der. Okay, contact section, contact form, blah blah blah. Det vi gør, det vi siger, at vi har Options, Contact, Actual Contact, Contact Section, Contact Section, Contact Form for Titling, Underscore Contact Section. Ah, lad os se. Edit for Add Setting Section. Det er rigtigt. Okay, det er rigtigt nok også. Og så under scroll. Ja. Og så har vi... Hormon. Ja, okay, og så er det der. Ikke problemet er, men... Jeg skal lige prøve at skrive. Hormon. Sunset. In contact. Sådan der. Den her nede, den hedder bare Custom CSS. Ah, og jeg har kaldt den for Sunset Custom CSS Section. Nej, jeg skal Ja, Sunset Custom CSS Section. Uh, så det er underscore call value. Jo, oh, det her der kigger. Ja, den er call value, så det er underscore, ja. Yeah. Wait. Hvorfor har jeg kaldt den her for callback? Nå oh, er det fordi det er det her der er callback, men det er setting section, yes. Setting section, callbacket. Den ser rigtig ud, og så har vi... Hammer, 
shit, 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 shit. Okay, they put Mark and Virgo, I guess. Push finger. Yay! Hey. Det eneste problem, det er ikke helt ved. Der er loading failed. Custom CSS, okay. Den sagde loading failed. For... Custom... CSS. Og det er fordi... Skal vi lige en Siden lige Custom CSS. Eller har jeg lavet den? It's super ugly, something really sweet happened. Whatever, and custom can work and let. Yeah, then there are custom scissors, Julius. What and so I didn't pull them say. Kick fin JS, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Right here, but. Cost. So they can't even find it. Okay. So yeah. Customs. No, the first one is fine. So then we got to be. Then we just got to be fine. Skin there. Got to be. And. Yeah, it's going to score. Okay. So then. Let's see how we. Yes, a section. Oh yeah, so screw assembly there. Let's go down, let's go down. Oops. Down, down, or something. Ace is not defined. Huh? Okay. Wait, what? Okay. Let me see why I don't know. Oh. Now for the ASCO, where is that required? Like this, so that's not nice thing. Right. Okay, I guess. I see. Det er fordi jeg er i stedet for den, så brugte jeg noget heller nu. Ja, jeg gemte folderen, altså er I skal ikke det? Jo. Så hvis jeg går ind her. Det burde den så meget gerne være, det burde være is. Den er egentlig en kjone. Ah, jeg siger hvorfor. Det er fordi... Ace scriptet ikke er blevet til før, tror jeg. 
Czy go inna na tym? Why do not include the name increment mina? Yeah, that one. In Q script. I think you're fair too for them there. I'm not kidding. Ace. No, wait, 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 wait. JS. Ace, 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 Sådan der. Jeg tror jeg, hvis det var det. Okay. Failed load script. With source and some of det der. Yes, yes, yes. Det burde meget gerne virke. Der. 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 Why no load? Fail, loading failed for the scripted source. <sighs> oh hey. Oh, you can see. At the first <laughs> test, you can also use CKE editor or CK editor. Eller tiny, ja, tiny MC, det er jo den, jeg tænkte på, på et tidspunkt. Um, sorry, hvis det er kedeligt. Uh, uh, Mauren. Hvad hedder det? Jeg var lige stak lige nu på, hvorfor den ikke kan tilføje den der. Uh, men det er rigtig nok, at man kunne bruge tiny MC også. Men nu vil jeg gerne lige fuldt tutorial nu, bare for just in case. Og så kan jeg altid lave en ny, hvad hedder det, hvad skal man sige, side tutorial, øh, hvor jeg bruger TinyMC også måske. Men lad mig lige se, hvorfor jeg kan tilføje den der. Okay, det virker øh, i forhold til øh, det scriptet, ikke? Jo, det er et script. Og så... Øh, ace, ace, shit, øh. Det er et script. Hmm. Au. Ja, det er også true. Okay, der er en del. Det vil godt gøre lige sådan her. Bare lige for at se, om det her det virker. Fordi hvis det virker, så er det fordi, jeg har skrevet noget forkert sikkert. Oh shit. Sorry. Øh, sådan der, så siger jeg sådan der. Boom. Nu, no, okay, så det er et eller andet græk galt med den der. Men det er smærkeligt, det, det, den burde altså kunne finde det. Den er lidt urig. Og den er der. Altså, noget themes. 
Sunset Theme. Oh, JS. Ah! Ha 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 ha. I know what I did wrong. Oops. Sorry. I know, I know. Hey! Oh my god, you're a gangster. <laughs> yeah! Okay, okay, okay. I feel like I'm a hacker now. Like. <laughs> right. um, let's go back. Yeah, no, second head wise. So if there's a stop. So if you notice here, even if it's super ugly, something really sweet happened. So every time we insert a row, we have the number of the row. We can click on the row to select the entire row. And the syntax gets recognized. So text, if I put something here and I open the brackets, I can use the tab to create a proper spacing. If I highlight a bracket, you will notice here the closing or the opening bracket gets highlighted. So it's really helpful. And here we have text, font, oops, sorry. <laughs> I can write like font size. I forgot how to write CSS font size 13 pixels. Oh my God, pixels, okay. Uh, cancel, pixel, okay. Um, something that I can style also, I can style a little bit the whatever source code this text that I have to handle. So by default, it's nothing, it's just a simple IDE. But we can specify with some uh, pre-built code from Haze what kind of text that we wanna have. So let's go back in our JS file, the Sunset Custom CSS JS file. And here now we can uh, use the variable editor that we created here to call the Ace edit in our custom div and use a pre-built API function of Ace to set theme. And I wanna set a theme that I really like that is the Monokai theme, that it's something dark, it's really clean and easy to read. So let's re-access Ace, is the URL, is the folder where all my script is, mm -hmm. theme dash Monokai. Save it, let's go back in our administration panel, refresh it. And now we have the Monokai theme that it's pretty sweet. Look at that, look at that. It's dark and white text, but yes. also here, if we write again, some custom code, some custom CSS code, like for example, this should be uh, styled in some way, or maybe not, like this should be styled in some way with font, size should be recognized, but it's not recognized because this text area, um, this ID is not set to recognize a specific code, a specific language. What we can do, we can use another API of A's to edit this behavior and reuse the same variable editor dot get session, open and close the bracket, and set the mode of this current session to CSS. So let's open the double quote, ace to access the same folder, mode to specify the mode, and I want the mode to be CSS. Save it, let's go back here, refresh, and now we know that worked because the comment in CSS is uh, darker gray instead mm. of white, and if I write dot uh, test, you see it's highlighted, and also, because it's empty, I have suggestion. The rule is empty, or if I don't specify the brackets, the expected brackets, expected curly brackets, light green column 70 is amazing. It's like super easy, super simple. And now, did you see what happened? I hit hard enter, I hit hard return, and I have already the indentation that I need. And I can use font size yeah, font 13 also, yeah. pixel, and I have everything nicely styled with a nice color oh, coding. Yes. It's, it's super easy yeah, to edit. So, yeah. your user will love this section because it's easy to understand. It looks like, it totally looks like this. It totally looks like a mm -hmm, legit mm -hmm, IDE. Mm -hmm. See, it's pretty much identical and everything is beautiful. Now we have another small issue because by default, we uh, created in our function admin a div to contain the custom mm -hmm. CSS, to contain our options. We don't have a proper text editor. We don't have an input with an ID to send those information and save it automatically uh, to our WordPress. So what we can do, we can create another text area after this section and put it the text area as a hidden text area and before saving the option copy all the text all the information that we have inside this custom css div and put it inside the text area and then automatically wordpress will be able to save that option with whatever information we have okay so let's do that let's create a text area we mm, blah, blah, blah. id wait for me equal wait for uh, me. the same option name the same register setting Stop. <laughs> uh, it's going on a... Whoa, blue web. no so open about admin there. Let's see if we go say uh do do shia there. No, I hate them there. Edit them. There was sunset. Sunset uh custom CSS. Back back down. Oh I'll see you to see that I have here and Okay. I'll do wall him to add bill. Text area, okay. Do a text area and screw say. Yeah. I find screw over. Kick it like that. They allow they allow new output. What's the CV? Punk som lige med en ny div. Eller en ny div, undskyld. Vi tager text 
area idéen til at være sunset css og så der hvad det nu same name here sunset css and by default we have to put a style an inline style of display none and just to be sure we can put like visible hidden so it's not gonna be visible it's gonna be displayed and if you don't access the source code you don't even know that the text that is here let's close the text area and inside the text area we can print by default this css option right because if the user doesn't update anything we still got hey what well uh jeg har lige fundet din blog. Du må aldrig outputte noget ud, før du bruger header. Simpelthen er årsag, er den årsag, at headers outputter, outputter responsen. Simpelthen er den også. Nå, ja. Make sense. Det er rigtig nok. Er det ikke det, jeg har skrevet i min blog, at man ikke skulle gøre? Det kan godt være, at jeg har skrevet forkert så. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> tilbage til der. Uh, lad os se her. Mm. Det var... Ja, før det. Så, så vi har den her, så vi... Den der. Den der. CSS. Bam. And I have this option already inside of Vertex Data. But anyway, every time we save it, before save it, we're gonna stop with JavaScript. We wanna manually stop sending information of the form, and we're gonna... Um, dynamically copy whatever custom code that the user wrote inside our ID oh. and we're gonna put it inside the, oh, okay. our yeah. custom uh, text area with the proper ID so WordPress can handle all this stuff for us. Before going any further though we have to extend a little bit more our register yeah, settings by calling a sanitization callback function because we are giving the user the ability to write custom code inside our forget. admin yeah. theme and this yeah. custom yeah. code yeah. is going to be saved, it's going to be stored inside our uh, MySQL database. This can be really dangerous because a user can write malevolent code, like malignous code, can inject some SQLs, can inject some weird JavaScript stuff. So mm -hmm. we have to True. extra sanitize this text error because we are telling them, okay, you can write stuff in here, you can write actual code. So we don't want to encounter any issues, any problem. Mm -hmm. What we can use, of course, there exists a pre-built function of WordPress to uh, sanitize a text area to encode a specific HTML entities inside our uh, administration panel. What we have to do? No, I described man ikke måtte lave en vartom først. No, bare okay, yeah, okay, yeah, det er nok. I see, I see, I see, I see. We have to extend the register settings option where we are creating the sunset underscore CSS option, and let's create the sanitize callback. So let's use sunset underscore sanitize underscore custom. Okay. Jamen det var helt ret, Maurand, det er rigtigt. Øh, men det er også rimelig længe siden, jeg har lavet den der. Men øh, det er rigtigt nok. Det, det, det er noget, som er interessant at vide for folk også. Øh, nu skal vi se her. Hvad var det? Nå jo. Custom CSS register string. Eller register setting. Øh, register setting. Deroppe. Og så har du en ekstra. Ja. Yeah. Så det du laver, det er, at du sanitizer den med en ekstra funktionalitet. Ja, okay. Lad os sige, lad os sige, lad os sige. Så det du gør, det vi gør sådan, no, det vi gør, det vi gør sådan her, så siger vi san, sun, sunset, uh, sanitize custom, damn it. <laughs> sanitize custom CSS. Nå, no, faktisk, det er fint nok, at du skal, ikke, du skal ikke tænke på, at du er annoying. Jeg synes faktisk, det er fint nok at snakke med folk, mens jeg prøver at lære noget WordPress i det her. CSS. And let's call, let's copy this. I'm already used a sanitization option here, so sanitize settings. Let's duplicate this. Let's copy the sanitize function. Hold on, well. That I decided to name it. Let's put it together. Okay. Uh, sanitization settings, okay. Det er fordi, okay, det er fordi han kan pisse dig, jeg siger altså, oh, sorry, sådan der, sådan der, og så, sådan der, og sådan der, bam. Input, the output, instead of using sanitized text field, I don't even have to replace the at of the Twitter handle, instead of using sanitized text field, I can use escape text area to sanitize the uh, input that is my actual text area and this uh, function is is going to encode all the text for use inside of a text area element so i'm going to be uh, pretty safe pretty sure that whatever the user is inputting in my text area is going to be escape uh, 
Ich lande da. Schon da. Probably before saving whatever. Men hvad, hvorfor er det egentlig, du sætter det ind i WordPress? De fleste VP-programmer har, har set går ikke i gang ned på det niveau. Um, grunden til det er fordi, jeg er allerede klar, godt klar over, at uh, rigtig mange WordPress-byråer, de bruger uh, hvad hedder det, plugins og sådan noget der. Um, grunden til, at jeg går ned på sådan et niveau, det, grund, det er for, at jeg kan lære og ændre i de WordPress plugins eller temaer, der kommer til at være. For det er en af de ting, som jeg har lagt mærke til, som jeg også har erfaringer med. Det kan være, at jeg tager fejl. Det er, jeg, hvad hedder det, har prøvet på at ændre, eller det man typisk får af opgaver, det er sådan noget med, at din kunde siger, jamen kan du ikke lige gøre den her blå, eller kan du ikke lige tilføje den her funktionalitet til den her tema, eller sådan noget, altså, ikke? Og i stedet for at downloade en ny hvad hedder det, plugin til plugins og alt sådan noget der, så ender det altså med, at det hele fucker op. Øh, men også fordi, altså det er en af grundene til dem. Den anden grund til det, det er, at jeg i sidste ende, altså til min bachelorprojekt, det er, øh, eller, undskyld, eller undskyld, som et, øh, sim, øh, det her praktikprojekt, sorry, så skal jeg, øh, har jeg sat et mål for mig selv og for skolen, at jeg skal kunne lave eller lære at lave et uh, WordPress tema og WordPress plugin. Så det er en del af det her. Øhm, selvfølgelig, øhm, hvis jeg kommer til senere hen at arbejde med øh, min bachelorprojekt, det er ikke sikkert, men det kan være et samarbejde med et firma, og hvis jeg kommer til at være med i det her webbyrå, eller undskyld, WordPress bureau, øh, og skrive mit proje- øh, bachelorprojekt der til oktober, november måned, så uh, skal jeg skabe noget nyt, sådan set. Så jeg skal enten skabe et nyt WordPress team, eller et WordPress plugin, eller et word- ny hjemmeside, eller noget i den stil. Så jeg kan ikke bare, hvad hedder det, lære WordPress på den måde. Altså, hvad skal man sige? Jeg kan ikke lære at gå i gang med at tage i praktik, for eksempel. Jeg skal også kunne finde ud af at, hvad hedder det, at lave noget nyt inden for den her web bureau eller webudvikling generelt. Så det er grund til det. Jeg håber det gav mening. information inside my database. So let's scroll back. Men by the way, når jeg har lært det her også, så giver det mig også en større sandsynlighed måske for at kunne øhm, at blive ansat hos det webbureau. Hvor skal det i praktik hen? Øhm, det er i hvad hedder det? Lasse web hedder det, som ligger her i Aalborg. Øhm, så det er der, jeg skal hen. Øhm, og det er et webbyrå, som specialiserer sig for AdWords og sådan noget. Men det, som jeg umiddelbart får til opgave, det er nok, at jeg skal gå ind og så lave forskellige... Vi har snakket om det nemlig sådan meget svagt, men jeg, det, jeg kommer til at få opgaver, det er sådan noget med, at jeg skal rette i... Hvad hedder det? Eller jeg skal videreudvikle eller komme til at rette i øh, forskellige øh, hjemmesider, for eksempel. Meget basic stuff, faktisk. Men når jeg gør det her, så giver det mig også muligheden for at øh, lave et tema, som er måske mere specialiseret. Ja, det øh, Jeg ved ikke om... Det kan godt være, at jeg har været på TV2 øh, på et tidspunkt, men det har så været på TV2 i Nordjylland. Det er der, de har været, mener jeg. Jeg er ikke 100% sikker. Vi har alt korrekt, det er custom CSS. Vi har display visible, save it, let's go back in our administration panel, let's refresh it, of course, no so. options saved, but if we access the source code in the inspector and yeah. we analyze our options here, we will notice that here we have a text area that is not visible because we have both display known and maybe instead of visible we have to specify visibility. Yes, hidden, sorry, the CSS value is not visible, but visibility, hidden. Okay, we have this option, so here it's completely empty, but at least we have sunsettheme.css. Mm-hmm. And if I write something inside here, for example, test, and I save the changes, I will have test written here, because whatever I wrote inside the text area gets automatically saved, automatically sanitized by WordPress. So what I have to do now, I have to... Verbally. Her forever. <laughs> Når du skulle finde nok du datamatikere. Øhm. Per. 
jeg mener, jeg, jeg, kender, jeg kender en pære fra Dags øh, Det er bare længe, tror jeg, det er længe siden, det er været. Måske to år siden eller sådan noget. Øhm, Dags Matikere. Hvad er det så nu? Block this click before it triggers the form uh, sending option, the, the form post option, and copy paste whatever thing I write inside this option here inside this div element and put it inside the text area. So what I have to do, I have to access my JavaScript code and open jQuery. In this case, I really need jQuery. Let's reuse the same function that I used before and let's paste a jQuery document ready function and attribute the dollar option to jQuery. Let's close curly brackets, let's close the regular brackets and semicolon at the end to close it. Update CSS or you can call this variable whatever you want and this variable is gonna maintain, it's gonna contain a function to update our actual CSS area, our actual Hello. text area. So ready. let's open, let's write function, regular brackets, curly brackets, inside a curly bracket. Sorry. Uh, ready. Oh my god, Function. No, oh, yeah, okay. No, oh, yeah, you have it full time. Nice. This could find that you. So you have not gotten a further going out, or a top up dance, or what? I think I have done too many. Yeah, too many things there. Og hvad arbejder du med, øh, når du arbejder fuldtid? Hvad arbejder du med? We can write our custom function. So let's open, call jQuery with a dollar sign. Inside here we have to call the ID of our text area that we can retrieve inside our function admin. And the ID is sunset underscore CSS. Hash symbol sunset underscore CSS dot val is the jQuery function, is jQuery um, function to access the information of the value of a specific HTML input, text area, checkbox, whatever. And inside here we have to use some pre-built API of our editor. So we can access the editor dot get session to retrieve the current session and then dot get value and open and close the brackets. So now this variable called update CSS has inside this yeah, function. So every time we call this function, yeah. it's this variable, it's, it's, an, it's an actual function. So every time we call this uh, function inside this unique variable that we can retry whatever we want, this thing is going to happen. So our custom hidden text error is going to get the value of whatever mm, things is written inside the ID, whatever thing the user written wrote inside the CSS um, case area. Now what we have to do, we have to hook the submission of yeah, our form, nice. this method post this option, this a a form, to this function here. So every time a user submit the form, this function has to get has to get triggered in order to update the text area. To do that, we have to just... Be Infrastruktur udvikler hos Sitcom, eller IT, men det kommer, hvor jeg udvikler på interne værktøjer, der streamliner workflows med mere. Åh, oh, så so sådan noget som pipelines, pipelines og sådan noget. Det er bare en unik ID til vores form, for eksempel uh, save dash custom. Sådan set. Custom. Set. Ja. Yeah. Uh, hvad er det nu, jeg tænker på? Det er fordi, jeg tænker på sådan noget som, uh, hvad hedder det? Sådan arkitekturisk også, at gøre alting fuldstændig dekoblet. Så kan man øh, lidt op lave sådan noget stream, streamlined workflow, hvor at man ligesom, lidt ligesom Docker-agtigt, ikke? så har man alle de moduler, og så skal man prøve at sørge for, at, at det hele det er sådan virkelig separeret overalt. Det lyder til at være sådan noget der. Save. CSS form. This is our unique ID, and every time this form gets submitted, we have oh, to call that function. To do that, we have to use Hold this on. usual. <laughs> our Save unique custom ID. CSS form. Save custom CSS form. They will log it. What is it? And every time this form gets submitted, we have to call that function. To do that, we have to use as usual jQuery that is pretty powerful and gives us all the options to do this. So hashtag the ID of the form dot submit is the function that gets called when a form gets submitted and inside here inside the brackets of this submit function we have to just simply call the variable that we specify the update css variable so every time the form gets submitted before submitting this function will update the css in our text area and then after this function gets exhausted gets executed the form will be automatically submitted well depends what the definition of 
Så man kommer at gøre arbejdsgangen er optimerende. Nå, ja okay. Nej, jeg tænker mere på sådan noget som... Øh, hvad hedder det sådan noget som... Hvad hedder det nu? Tidsspor. <laughs> det jeg tænker på, det er sådan noget som Docker jo. Docker de har jo de her forskellige funktionaliteter med at kunne containe alle mulige modules og sådan noget. Og så bruger man sådan noget som Jenkins for eksempel til at kunne øh, automatisere noget af workflowen og sådan noget. Sådan tænker jeg. Er det ikke sådan noget af den stil? That without any issues, so we can put all these code together. We can put only line to have just two lines, so it's more uh, clean. So let's access our backend. Let's refresh it. And now here, if I click save change, of course, the page gets refreshed, setting save, whatever. But if I write some custom CSS and I go to another line and I write font size column 13 pixel and I click save changes, all my options are still here. All my custom text is still here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's send this person to here. <laughs> Break, I think not. Okay, uh, let's see how. So there is function admin. Let's go to function admin. In the to see line 200. Hey, where does she find her? Oh, I spent it. No, huh? So is this viable in the last unexpected? Oh, I see. No, wait, what? Oh, yeah, okay, I see. And then grunt sort of for the excuse me, syntax error, unexpected. No, the for the yes, kind of killer. Oops, this is under some there. Oh, so under some there. Bam, under there. Bam, so come to og så kan vi se, den skal være, det er meningen, at den skal være hidden, den der, så lad mig lige få den til at være hidden. Øh, jeg mener, det er i længere nu. Ups, lidt for langt nu. Øh, der. Display non-visible hidden. Åh, oh, det er fordi, jeg har skrevet en forkert op, tror jeg. Nej, det er ikke skrevet en forkert op. Style, det skal være display non-visible hidden text area. Okay. Let's see what for the nigga hidden. Text area. Then uh stale none oh hidden. Hmm. Interesting. Ah I love for oops. So there. Haha, no hidden. I was give us now. Let's see. Dot text. I don't care. Uh, hide to be uh, no pixels. I say click for control S. Do we know for Marty? Hey! Oh my God! Did you <laughs> Wow. So if I refresh, change the page, I refresh the page. Everything is still here, and everything gets saved inside our database after the sanitization that we define in our function admin. So this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sanitization here, right at the bottom, we escape the text area with whatever input we want, and we can safely save all the custom CSS that the user wants to insert inside this custom area. And if we access the source code and we go take a look at our text area here, you will notice here we have actually the text area with the mm -hmm, input, mm -hmm. whatever input we have. Mm -hmm, so if mm -hmm. I change this, if I remove the test and if I leave just an empty declaration, this is not updated. But if I click save, so this gets updated and also the text area, yeah, the yeah. actual value of the text area gets updated thanks to the JavaScript function that I wrote here with the submit of this form. So also for today's lesson is pretty much it. We finally completed, we finally finished the backend. My we have goodness. all the options, all the sections <laughs> that I wanted to create to show you how to create some custom options, some advanced content yeah, form, some advanced custom fields, some advanced uh, custom post type, and some nice stylish thing for our user to customize mm -hmm. the theme that we want to release. From the next lesson, we're going to start building finally the front end with whatever information we have in the back end. So if we access just an example, the front end, you'll notice it's completely empty. We got nothing because we didn't even specify some header, some post, nothing. It's completely empty. So we're going to start from scratch in building our beautiful sunset theme has the Photoshop file that you downloaded at the beginning of this session. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, guys, for checking this video. As usual, if you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to me. For hell, they got there. Okay, skip uh, signal for the tiny MC. They're right now, they're also in editor. Man kan bruge, uh, skal jeg se, most advanced, holy shit.
Øhm, dog så tror jeg ikke, den er så genial at bruge i det her tilfælde, fordi det her det er sådan meget mere, hvad skal man sige, til generelle tekstformater. Det er mens at det andet, der jeg tænkte på, det var, eller det de bruger, det er jo en reel teksteditor. Altså sådan like coding teksteditor. Øh, jeg ved ikke, jeg har indsat code sample. Det, det er ikke det, jeg leder efter. Det skal være reel kode, tror jeg. Man skal sætte ind, så hvis nu gør sådan her, så siger jeg bare lige. Ja, ja, ja. ja, netop. Det er ikke sådan noget, jeg leder efter. Men jo, det er rigtig nok. TinyMC, det er genialt i forhold til det her. I forhold til generelt at lave en ny, hvad skal man sige, custom editor, HTML editor. Så yes, det her, det har været nice. Hvor mange timer har jeg brugt på det her? To, to og en halv time. Jeg tror, jeg stopper for, jeg ved ikke, for i dag, men jeg stopper i hvert fald lige nu og tager en pause. Ja, jeg vil gerne lige sige tak til Mauran for at være med til det her. Det var ret fedt. Og se nogle andre, hvad, ligesom at snakke omkring POP og hvor rådende det er. <laughs> Men ja, øhm, yeah. altså hvis der er spørgsmål, så kan jeg altid stille dem jo. Ja, øhm, yeah. jeg håber i hvert fald, at jeg får et job hos dem. Eller i det mindste får et job et andet sted, efter jeg er færdig med min uddannelse på UCN. Det sluttes her til januar, så nu må vi se, om, hvor, langt, hvor langt det kommer til at gå. Um, yes, jeg tror ikke der er mere um, Ellers så vil jeg sige tak fordi I har set med Og jeg håber I var interesseret i det her Og hvis I har nogle forslag til hvordan man kunne gøre det her bedre Så sig det endelig i kommentarsektionen Eller skriv det endelig i kommentarsektionen Eller kontakt mig på en eller anden random måde På YouTube eller Facebook eller blog Eller whatever Så ellers så, yes, jeg tror hvis det var det ja, igen tak til Magram for at være med Eller Magran for at være med Og ja vi ses det næste gang. Peace!